Hi, my name is Dan, and this is a video about an interesting section of the block of State Street, just north of the old State House in Hartford, Connecticut. This is an 1890s view eastwards down State Street. On the right is the old State House. Just beyond it is the old post office building that occupied the east yard of the old State House from the 1870s through the mid-1930s. On the other side of State Street were now lost landmarks like the Hartford Current Building that was designed by the architect George Keller and the Greek Revival-style Hartford National Bank. This video is going to be about the area just west of these buildings. At the time of this photo, the United States Hotel was here a long block that had several stores along the ground floor. The famous Honus Oyster House was in the basement. The hotel had a highly ornamented main entrance with a decorative covered balcony above the doorway. This photo is another view of the block taken on December 4, 1896. It also shows the elaborate entryway. This postcard from about 1940 shows a later view down State Street with the old State House again on the right. The post office building had been demolished by this time. A major addition in the center of State Street was the Isle of Safety, which stood here from 1913 until 1976. It was erected to provide a safe place for people to wait to board trolley cars or, by the time of this postcard, buses. The section of State Street that had been the United States Hotel had been completely replaced by the time of this postcard with new buildings. First, there was the 1898 First National Bank Building, designed by the prominent architect Ernest Flagg. Just west of it was the Regal Theater, and beyond that was a W.T. Grant store. Honus's Oyster House continued in business in the basement. In the 1980s, this area was completely transformed by the erection of the large State House Square complex. This new structure incorporated the facade of the old First National Bank, but the rest of the block, including the old Grant's store, is now occupied by part of the complex's glass entry pavilion. Between that and the old State House, what used to be a section of State Street is now a pedestrian-only area, and the old Isle of Safety is now located at the Connecticut Trolley Museum in East Windsor. In 2019, a white brick outline of the Isle of Safety's original footprint was unveiled to commemorate the beloved Hartford landmark. In the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the historic institutions that once stood just north of the Isle of Safety. The United States Hotel, the First National Bank, the Regal Theater, W.T. Grant's, and of course, the long-lived Honus Oyster House. So let's begin our story with a long-lost colonial house that was built over 300 years ago and stood near the center of where the glass pavilion is today. The house was erected in about 1722 by James Church and was purchased by Hezekiah Collier in 1739. Collier's son, also named Hezekiah, would keep a tavern and inn here until his death in 1768. By the way, Hezekiah Collier's granddaughter, Sarah Caldwell, would become the mother of Samuel Colt, the famous Hartford firearms manufacturer. After Collier's death, his widow Janet ran the tavern. There is a story that on May 23, 1781, a banquet was held here for George Washington and the French general, the Comte de Rochambeau. They were fresh from their conference at the Webb House in Wethersfield, 
and the next day they would depart to begin the campaign that would end with victory at Yorktown a few months later. Washington stayed at the tavern again as president in 1789 during his tour of New England. By that time, the tavern was run by Frederick Bull, who the year before had established it as the City Coffee House. Under its next owner, it would become known as Ripley's Coffee House and is depicted here from an 1823 advertisement. By this time, a third story had been added to the building. In 1826, this structure seems to have been moved to the rear of the lot to make way for a new building, Ripley's United States Hotel, which opened April 26, 1827. This became Morgan's United States Hotel when Homer Morgan took over from Jabez Ripley in 1829. By the early 1850s, the hotel was being run by Harvey Rockwood. In 1854, a fire damaged the hotel and destroyed the old tavern building at the rear of the property. The following year, Rockwood remodeled the building and added a new four-story addition. Four years later, in 1859, the elaborate entryway that I mentioned earlier was installed on the front of the building. In 1865, the hotel had a new proprietor, David A. Rood, who would run it for much of the next 35 years. Before taking over the United States Hotel, Rood had been managing another hotel that was just a few doors to the east. This was the Eagle Hotel, depicted here in a section of Smith's map of Hartford County from 1855. The building was erected circa 1830 by Norman Smith. It initially had three stores on the ground floor, and there were three floors of tenements above. Amazingly, Smith was warned at the time that a four-story building was just too big for Hartford. In about 1834, two-thirds of the building was acquired by Edson Fessenden, who had a stagecoach line to New Hartford. He opened the Eagle Hotel as a hostelry and headquarters for his stage line. The other third of the building was home to the drug merchants McNary and Buck, who for many years ran their store at the sign of the Good Samaritan. In 1851, David A. Rood took over management of the Eagle Hotel from Fessenden. In 1855, the same year that the United States Hotel was expanded by Rockwood, Rood expanded the Eagle Hotel with a new five-story addition to the rear. He also gave the expanded hotel a new and fancier name, the Trumbull House. As I mentioned earlier, in 1865, Rood moved from managing the Trumbull House, formerly the Eagle Hotel, to managing the United States Hotel. Captain John M. Parker took over the Trumbull House, followed by H. H. Bartlett in 1867. In the meantime, Rood had purchased the Trumbull House building, and when Bartlett's lease expired in 1869, Rood combined the two hotels into one. The newly expanded United States Hotel now had about 170 rooms, in the years before the current state capitol was built, the hotel's proximity to the old state house made it popular with Republican politicians, who had their headquarters here during conventions and sessions of the General Assembly. The hotel's advertising declared commercial trade a specialty, and it was indeed popular with traveling salesmen called drummers. It also had a number of prominent long-term residents such as two lieutenant governors, a few insurance company presidents, the pastor of the Fourth Congregational Church, and baseball players back when Hartford had a team in the National League. There were also many famous guests, 
Oscar Wilde spent the night of February 2nd, 1882 at the United States Hotel and dined on oysters from Honus Oyster House. He was in town to give a lecture on the English Renaissance at Robert's Opera House. Commercial stores continued to occupy spaces on the building's ground floor. In 1869, Rude leased part of the old Eagle Hotel Trumbull House property at the east end of the block to the First National Bank. In 1895, he would sell the entire Eagle Trumbull block to the bank. This 1890s view shows the First National Bank sign on the right. Zooming in, just west of the bank, was Kriegler's Cigar Store, which later moved to Asylum Street. And west of that, in what 40 years earlier had been the drugstore at the sign of the Good Samaritan, is a sign with the name Frank L. Avery. This was the entrance to the bar and pool room of the United States Hotel. Avery was in charge of the bar for many years and became the best-known bartender in the city. A few doors west, just to the right of the main entrance to the United States Hotel, were stairs that led to one of Hartford's most legendary and long-lived businesses. In 1845, two fishermen named Barnes and Coates started an oyster store called the Fair Haven Depot, which by 1855 was located in the basement here. Ownership of the store changed hands several times over the years. By the early 1860s, it was owned by A. Thomas and Company, and in the early 1870s, it was taken over by Charles Bradley. But in 1877, it was bought by the man whose name it would bear for over a century. Born in England in 1837, Thomas A. Honus arrived in Hartford in 1856 and worked for the oyster dealers E.P. Goodsell & Company and then at the grocery store of A. Squires & Son at the Putnam Phalanx Market on Market Street before acquiring the Oyster Depot under the United States Hotel. Honus ran the business until 1900. In those early days, the store's dining room had only three tables and nine chairs, but under later owners, the restaurant section of the Honus Oyster House would expand to over 35 tables and a seating capacity of 150. On the right is a picture of the entrance to Honus's Oyster House in 1922. Going back a bit, as I mentioned, in 1895, Rood sold the old Eagle Hotel or Putnam House property to the First National Bank. This photo shows the bank with a sign in the window indicating its removal to temporary quarters on Main Street. The old building was demolished in 1897 to make way for the bank's new seven-story Beaux-Arts-style building, which, as I mentioned, was designed by Ernest Flagg and was completed in 1898. The following year, the 82-year-old David A. Rood filed for bankruptcy and left the hotel that had been his home for nearly half a century. Business had been bad for several years, and Rude had had to keep putting money into the aging building, which required constant repairs. He was required to pay for these repairs himself under the terms of his lease, and he had kept borrowing money on the old Trumbull House section, which he owned personally and, as I said, eventually sold to the First National Bank. After Rude's departure, the owners of the property, the wealthy and prominent Hartford brothers James J. and Francis Goodwin, had kept the hotel running until 1901, but then had the entire building made over for business uses. The hotel's old grand entrance was removed. 
This is another view of the First National Bank and the old United States Hotel building after the hotel had shut down. Just west of the entrance to the bank where the old hotel's barroom had been, Joseph P. Guilfoyle ran the City Hall Grocery. This was in business for nearly two decades here when he sold it to new owners in 1919. This photo is a view west up State Street towards Main Street. On the right are the entrances to the First National Bank and the City Hall Grocery, also called the City Hall Market. I think this picture was taken in 1920 or 1921 specifically to document the displays of fruits and vegetables outside both the grocery and the neighboring fruit store just west of it. As the Hartford Current reported on June 9, 1921, quote, At a meeting of the street board last evening, an opinion of Corporation Counsel Walter S. Schutz was read, relating to obstructions on State Street and maintaining that these were encroachments and Superintendent of Streets Peck was instructed to issue an order for the removal of certain encroachments within two weeks. Mr. Schutz and City Engineer Clark made extended examination of old records and established the fact that private property stopped at the face of the buildings. Such extensions as fruit stands, showcases, barber poles, area ways, steps of buildings and railings are encroachments, according to the opinion." Unquote. Later that month, the grocery and other businesses along State Street were forced to bring their displays inside, although the steps to the First National Bank and the railings in front of the basement entrance to Honus Oyster House were allowed to remain. A few months later, however, Barney Goldberg, the owner of the grocery, and Frank Maniello, owner of the fruit store, were charged with violating a city ordinance for again placing boxes and merchandise on display in the street. Goldberg argued that he genuinely thought that the steps leading to the First National Bank constituted the line for private property and that he could display merchandise up to that point. The prosecutor accepted that Goldberg genuinely believed this and the case was therefore dismissed. Zooming in, the grocery's front door displayed a poster which had the words Toward America for Relief and depicted Ireland with a kneeling woman reaching out across the Atlantic. These posters were released as part of a fundraising campaign in 1921 organized by the American Committee for Relief in Ireland, an organization formed in 1920 to give financial assistance to civilians who had suffered injury or severe financial hardship due to the ongoing Irish War of Independence. This photo was taken in 1924, after the old United States Hotel building had been demolished to make way for construction of a new W.T. Grant's store. Grant's was a discount store chain that existed from 1906 until 1976. Hartford's W.T. Grant building was a four-story structure with the store on the ground floor and offices above. Just as in the building it replaced, the Honus Oyster House would occupy the basement, with the entrance on the left or west end of the building's front facade. The adjoining structure that contained the City Hall Market remained standing until 1926, when it too was raised to make way for a new four-story building. This picture shows the completed buildings from some years later. As I mentioned, there was the W.T. Grant Building, 
which also had a prominent sign for Honus's, and the adjacent Regal Theater building. This structure was built in two stages, with the front retail store and office section erected in late 1926, followed by the theater in the rear, which opened September 15, 1928, with a showing of the new silent film adaptation of Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. These are two views east down State Street, showing the Regal Theater marquee in the 1940s. Beyond it is the marquee for the Princess Theater, which replaced the old Hartford National Bank. Let's return to the Honus Oyster House. During the construction of the W.T. Grant Building in 1924, Honus's moved to temporary quarters on Central Row at the corner of Prospect Street. This meant that for a few months, Honus's was just a few doors down from another legendary and long-lived Hartford restaurant, the Marble Pillar. In May of 1925, Honus reopened in the building it would occupy until it finally closed in 1982. This is a picture of the interior in 1926. Honus's postcards and matchbooks displayed images of the restaurant's dining room and its entrance doorway, which was then located at 22 State Street. This postcard shows the restaurant's dining room, the walls were decorated with Hartford memorabilia, 19th and early 20th century prints, photographs, and historic letters and documents. There were many pictures of famous people who dined at Honus's over the years, from Buffalo Bill and Mark Twain to Sophie Tucker and many others. The collection was started by Fred H. Acheson, who began working for Thomas A. Honus as a 14-year-old errand boy in 1883. When Atchison retired in 1948, he had long been president of the Honus Oyster House Company, which had been incorporated around 1914. Atchison had started the collection of memorabilia nearly 40 years earlier, after Thomas Saunders, a member of the Putnam Phalanx, gave him a picture of that Hartford-based patriotic organization. The collection grew from there, and it was continued by Atchison's successors. It grew so large that hundreds of items not on display had to be stored in an off-site warehouse. The W.T. Grant store underwent a major renovation in 1937, which included the construction of a two-story rear addition. But a big change to its front facade occurred in 1952, after the Regal Theater closed its doors. Grant's took over space in the former Regal Building, and now had a much enlarged storefront across the two buildings. As part of this redesign, the entrance to Honus's Oyster House was moved from 22 State Street at the west end of the Grant Building to 44 State Street at the east end of the Regal Building. Remember that a century earlier this had been the vicinity of the drugstore at the sign of the Good Samaritan. The Honus menu on the left depicts the old entrance at 22 State Street, while the menu on the right announces same location, new entrance, 44 State Street. This is a view down State Street in 1962, when the famous Phoenix Boat Building was under construction. In 1949, the First National Bank had merged with the Hartford National Bank and Trust Company. The old First National Building 
was then acquired by the Hartford Federal Savings and Loan Association, which built an addition on its east side after the adjoining Princess Theater was demolished in 1957. W.T. Grants continued in business until the entire chain went bankrupt in 1976, and its store on State Street closed its doors for good. The former Grant space had periods of vacancy, but the building was briefly a home for the arts organization Real Artways in the early 1980s. As I mentioned, the Honus Oyster House continued in operation until it closed its doors in 1982. Business had declined, and there had been a bitter 11-month strike by the Restaurant Employees Union in 1979-80. The Honus collection of Hartford memorabilia would go to the Connecticut Historical Society. The restaurant's name, logo, and recipes, however, were sold to the owners of the Hartford Ramada Inn, who opened a new version of the Honus Oyster House in December of 1983. This would last until 1988. Meanwhile, everything along State Street, except for the old First National Bank facade, was demolished to make way for the State House Square complex. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button. I would also greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.